Hello, my name is Roland Reyer. I am a technical specialist at Autodesk Media Entertainment in Europe. In this video, I would like to give you an introduction to visual programming with Bifrost. Instead of complex dynamic simulations, I will show you how to modify a geometry with Bifrost. In doing so, I can explain some important concepts for handling Bifrost and for editing data in Bifrost. Before we start, we need to make sure that the Bifrost plugin is loaded here in the Plugin Manager so that the Bifrost Browser and Bifrost Graph Editor entries appear in the Windows menu. Optionally, you can also load the plugins for Bifrost Fluid Dynamics. These are the Bifrost functions in the FX menus, but we don't need them here. I set up a workspace for Bifrost with the Bifrost Graph Editor docked on the right side, the Outliner right next to it, and Channelbox and Attribute Editor collapsed. We start with a very simple geometry with a polygon plane. A simple geometry makes it easier and faster to check the function of the graph. In the end, we can exchange the geometry for another one. Then I create a new graph here in the Bifrost Graph Editor. This creates this new node in the outliner. The node will contain all functions of the graph and will be connected to Maya via its inputs and outputs. Basically, we program a new node for Maya. You can have several such graphs in a Maya scene. They will appear as tabs up here. In the graph, there is already an input node and an output node. You can have multiple input and output nodes, for example, for different input geometries. I can create these nodes at any time in the Create menu, and they also appear when I import an object into the graph. So I delete the existing input node and then I drag my polyplane from the outliner with the middle mouse button into the graph editor. This creates a new input node which already has the correct name. This blue connector here at the input node transfers all data of my polyplane. If I click or drag on this connector, then a connection hangs at my mouse pointer. And because I don't have anything else here, I just hang the connection on this plus sign at the output node. And here we have the simplest graph you can imagine. In the outliner, a new object is created, BIF1. This is the output from Bifrost Graph 1 into the Maya scene. It is simply a copy of the input. We haven't changed anything in Bifrost yet. The connection here in the graph editor is still active, which means that when I change the input, the original polyplane, the BIF object changes accordingly. Even if I transform the input object as a whole, the BIF object moves as well. This is because of the fact that of the polyplane, the so-called world mesh is connected to the Bifrost graph, and this includes transformations. Now let's examine what data flows through this wire. By the way, the data always flows from left to right, just like in the dependency graph. As in Maya's dependency graph, such connection can be used to transfer single numbers, lists of points, or complex data structures. In the Bifrost Graph Editor, I can create a so-called watch point by right-clicking on the connection. This watch point shows which data types are transferred, not the data itself. As we can see here, the data consists of faces, normals, and UVs. You know all that from polygons. At the bottom, we see that there is a list of point positions and a list of point normals. Each of these lists contain 121 entries. There are 11 times 11 rows of vertices, which gives 121. I would like to change the position of the points maybe add some numbers to deform the objects. To do so, I have to get this list of points out of the connection. And we do this with a new node. When I press the Tab key, an input field and a menu appears. This is the only possibility to create new nodes here in the graph. I can now scroll through all the menus. Well, that's a bit tedious. Or I can search for nodes by name here in the input field. Often you have to guess a little bit. Let's see, we want the position of the points. Immediately a list of matching nodes is displayed. 
Down here there is a set point position that might be useful later. This here get point position looks promising. The node has a blue input and a green output. We already know this blue connector. This is probably the object. I can make this connection. But what is the green one and why does it have a different shape? Here I have a diagram that illustrates the colors and shapes of different connections. To make it simple, I renamed the connectors according to the data types. This bluish connector is an integer, which means a whole number. This blue-green is a floating point number. The yellow-green is a float 3, that means a triple of floating point numbers, XYZ positions, vectors or RGB colors are examples for float 3. The blue connector stands for all kinds of objects like geometry, particles, volumes, etc. The brown one is a boolean, a 0-1 switch, like the results of queries. There are more data types, I only mentioned the most important ones. If you are not sure which color stands for which data type, you can move the mouse pointer over such a connector and at the bottom of the graph editor, information will be displayed. Here you can see, for example, that this is a float 3 port. This plus sign means that you can add more connections to the node. This is true for input and output nodes, but also for compounds like this node. Then there are different shapes and icons for the node ports. This simple form stands for a single value. This hat form means that this is an array, like a list of values or objects. A straight line in front of a port means that the port automatically adapts to the data type you connect. If such triangles and dots appear in an array connection, it means that an array is processed automatically. Some connectors for simple values do this, but it can also mean that a multidimensional array is processed automatically. This icon indicates a fan in port. Here I can connect several connections and internally an array is made and processed. Let's talk about arrays. As said before, arrays are lists of values or objects and Bifrost is very good at handling such lists. You can think of such arrays as lines of an Excel sheet. The lines are not endless and can be even very short. If you connect such arrays to nodes, they are processed automatically and very fast. If I would connect, for example, two arrays of the same size with an add node, then I could immediately get a result array at the output where the single elements were added together. If I connect an array and a single value, then the result is that all values of the array are processed with this single value. A result can be of different data type and or an array of different size. In this example, I search with a find all in array node for all the ones in an array of booleans. It would be useless to output an array with lots of ones. Instead, I get an array with indices where the node found the ones and I can further process that. So let's go back to our Bifrost graph. We can now see that the float 3 array is output from the node get point position. Those are the XYZ positions of all points. I want to add something to this position. Let's do it right away. I click on this output so that it hangs on my mouse. Then I press tab and look for the node add. Oh, that was easy. And select it. The new node is connected automatically. The add node automatically has the type float 3 array and so far only one input. But I can already think further. After the addition, I want to return the new XYZ positions of the points back into the object. So I press tab again. We remember that we saw the node called set point position earlier. We could search for nodes with shortcuts for set point position, I enter SPP. And here is already the node we are looking for. This node needs an object as input. 
Let's take the existing connection to the output node. Our BIF object in the Maya scene disappears because of this. And as a second input, I connect the list with the point positions. The output is the finished object. I connect it back to the output node. And through this, the BIF object in the Maya scene appears again. Still the same, we haven't done anything with the points yet. By clicking on the plus sign of the add node, I can connect to an existing node or search for a node. With a right click on the plus sign, I can also create a value node. A value node is a way to feed a fixed value into a node. If the value node would not have the correct data type, I could set it up here. The value in the value node is still zero for all three axes. Now I enter a value for y and in the viewport you can see that the whole geometry was moved by this value. The pivot is still down here. Okay, that worked already, but is quite boring. So I delete the value node and search for a node with random numbers. Random. Here we have two hits. The random value node generates only one random value that would be similar to the value node we just saw. The random value array node generates a whole array of values. Then we would have an individual random value for each point in the geometry. I connect the output of the node with the add node. Oh, the BIF object has disappeared. Something is wrong here. Let's have another look at the random value array node. Here on the right, in the parameter panel, we see some settings for the node. There we see that the size of the array, the number of elements, is set to zero. The array is empty and therefore the BIF object has disappeared. How many elements do we need? Oh yes, we had 121 points, so I enter 121. Then the BIF object appears again with randomly changed points. The random points look a little bit strange and when I look at the random node I notice that the output is only of type float and not float3 as we need it. So how do I adjust that here? In the settings of the node I cannot set the type. If I am looking for information I can click on the info tab up here and there I usually find a description of the node. In the description of the input offset, I read that it defines the data type of the output numbers. So I can either connect a value node and control the data type with it, or I can open this window with a right click on the connector and select the type, or right click on this pop-up menu to select the suggested type, for example, float3. Now the random displacement of the point on the BIF object looks better. There's another problem. When I change the resolution of the original polyplane in Maya, the BIF object collapses. The problem is the fixed size of the random array. I would have to keep entering the correct number of points for it to work. But we can also automate this. The value size at the node is an input. So we only need to count the number of points from the object and enter the value here. When I search for size in the nodes, I actually find an array size node and this node does exactly what I need. I connect the node here and if I adjust the resolution of the polyplane, it works again. But I'm not satisfied yet. Instead of the random numbers, I would like to have a noise function that gives a specific offset for the positions of all points. In Bifrost, there are several such noise functions. I'll take the curl noise. Curl noise gets the point positions as input. This also determines how many values are output. This works immediately. I can adjust the resolution. As you can see, we have changing values when I move the input object. I get different results with different scales. So I can actually adjust the frequency of the field. 
I will add a multiplication to this connection and scale the positions by which the node calculates its offsets. If I select the connection, I can create a multiply node, then this node is immediately built into the connection. As a value for the multiplication, I could create a value node, but this is not very handy. I always have to enter three numbers. It is better if I connect directly from the multiply node to the input node. Practically, this is a simple float value at first. I rename the port to frequency. This port is now a channel of the Maya node Bifrost Graph 1. You can see it here in the channel box or in the attribute editor. If I change the value, the frequency changes. I can use this channel without looking at the Bifrost Graph editor and I can also animate the value or control it with an expression. On the other side of the noise node, I can also add a multiply node to control the magnitude of the function. Here I can create a value node, because at the value node for float 3, I can connect the x and the z component to one channel and the y component to another. This gives me separate control over the height of the noise function. Well, that looks pretty good already. Now I can hide the graph editor and play with the values for my noise deformer. Of course, it would be quite a lot of work if I had to build such a graph every time I want to have such a deformer. So let's have a look at how we can reuse this graph in the future. I have the possibility to create a so-called compound from selected nodes. You select all nodes and press Ctrl G or choose Create Compound in the right mouse button menu. This will combine all nodes into one group and the respective inputs and outputs now lead to this node group. This group, the compound, can now be renamed and as usual when programming I can use the function as a whole. I can also store this compound externally to use it in other graphs or to share it with other users. In the right mouse button menu of the node, I select Publish. And now this node, this compound, is part of Bifrost. If I enter the name in search, then the node will naturally appear in the list next to all other nodes of Bifrost. In fact, there is no difference between the compounds that came with Bifrost and my own. I can now use this node, for example, with a different geometry. Say I load this head and then I first use a node disconnect mesh faces to separate all the faces. I could now connect the parameter shrink to the Bifrost node. You already know this. The resulting geometry I could now edit with an extrude node. It looks like this. But in the middle between the two, I want to put my new node. Simply select the connection, enter the name here in the search window, select the node. There we are. Perhaps I connect the parameters to the Bifrost Graph 1 node. That was quick, wasn't it? This was my first video introducing Bifrost. We imported geometry into Bifrost, edited and modified the geometry and output it again. In Bifrost we worked with different data types, with objects, float 3, integer, with single numbers as well as with arrays. Finally, we created a compound and saved it for future use.